Good morning, everybody. So nice to see you again on this Thursday. All right. We'll go ahead and keep adding people as they get in here. For those of you that are here just like normal, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or a smiley face in the chat so I can know if you hear me. Good, lots of thumbs ups. Okay, great. All right, so for those that are in today, you are going to need Thursday activity number one, because it is Thursday, activity number one, and number two. Those are the ones we're gonna be doing together. And then I'm gonna show you how to do something else. So activity one is a tiny bag with a balloon and this piece of fabric. And then activity number two is a chameleon and some striped papers. Oh, and you also will need on top of activity number one and activity number two, you will need your colored pencils today. and scissors. So you're gonna make sure you get all that out. And we are putting it in the chat for you. So if you miss me say it, it is right there for you to read. Hey guys, one and two look like this. They might be a little bit small. I found mine at the bottom of my bag. Yep, it's where those small bags <laughs> like to hide all the way down at the bottom. It's two tiny bags today. Give you guys a few extra minutes to find those. What is it labeled? Thursday activity number one, or just Thursday number one. And number two, it might not have a label on it. And if it doesn't have a label, you're looking for the bag with a balloon and a piece of cloth and a chameleon and some striped paper. Oh, there's a glare on mine. There you go. You can see that better. All right. So, Go ahead and give me a smiley face in the chat if you found Thursday number one in your back. And I'll wait till we got most of you ready. Awesome, Pedro, I see yours, great. Emily, bag number one is this tiny rectangular bag. Yep, she's holding it up there for you too. It's got a balloon and a piece of cloth in it. All right, so let's see here. So while uh, the rest of you guys are looking, I'm just going to kind of explain what we're going to be doing uh, with activity number one. So activity number one is our climbing gecko uh, activity. So um, last week during Jedi Academy, for those of you that were there for those lessons, we talked a lot about static electricity um, here. So we're kind of going to do a similar activity today with the ones we were doing last week. So if you have your activity number one bag, go ahead and pull out the balloon and blow it up for me. You're gonna to wanna to blow it up and tie it off so that you can let go 
and it still stays blown up. And you might need someone's help for this. And you can blow it up as big or as small as you would like. Personally, I like mine a little big. All right, so I'll give you a second. I know these balloons can be kind of hard to blow up, especially the first time they're being blown up. All right. So the next thing that we are going to do with our balloon here is we actually have to go ahead and give it the uh, static charge. So that other piece of fabric that you had in your bag with your balloon is actually a small scrap of wool. This is the same material that we used last week with our PVC pipes to create static electricity. So once your balloon is all blown up, you're gonna go ahead and take that piece of wool that you have and you are going to rub it on the balloon for like 15 to 20 seconds to build up a good charge. So I'm just gonna hold mine down so I can keep it in the same spot and then start rubbing. All right. And you can tell it's getting a charge when you start to hear the tiny little static pops, just like with the PVC pipe. So before you stop rubbing, you're gonna wanna look around the room that you're in and pick either a wall or a mirror that's close by. And as soon as you stop rubbing your balloon, you're going to run over to that wall or mirror and try to stick your balloon to it using the static charge. So you're gonna need to make sure you use the same spot that you've been rubbing this whole time or it won't work. So as soon as you're done, I'm gonna go three, two, one, and oh, My wall does not like to stick with my balloon here. Uh, let's see if I can get it. We'll just keep trying. See what we can do. I don't have any mirrors in here, but I've heard that mirrors work really good too. Oh, we can try that. Let's see. Oh, almost. It's got a very little charge. <laughs> Not quite enough to hold it onto the wall. So you guys can play around with that, see if you can get it stuck on your wall. If you can get it stuck onto your wall or mirror, um, if you'd like, you can turn on your webcam and show us. Mine's not gonna wanna stick today, but I have a feeling that one of you guys will be able to get it to work. Pedro, have you tried sticking your balloon to anything yet? Nope, I tried. Nope, my wall doesn't like. Oh, it wasn't ready. Yeah, so sometimes you got to charge it up real good. If you don't want to use the piece of wool, uh, one thing I showed you guys last week that you can do, um, you may have had someone do this to you at a birthday party before, you can charge it by rubbing it on your hair too. So um, that way you might get a bigger surface area with that static charge, and then it might actually stick to the wall a little better. So I'm going to mess up my hair. Oh, that didn't want to work for me either. So my balloon does not like the materials of the wall that I have in here, uh, but that's okay. Sometimes it likes, or not sometimes, it likes really smooth surfaces. That's why like bathroom mirrors or any mirror um, will work a little bit better than a wall. So just to give you a little bit more um, scientific information from that activity that we just did. Um, it was called the climbing gecko. Uh, and that is because geckos can stick to surfaces because their um, bulbous or like really round big toes are covered in hundreds of really teeny tiny microscopic hairs. Uh, and those hairs are called um, setae. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right, 
right? Um, but it's kind of just like the way that Spider-Man sticks to the walls when he's climbing around. Uh, once he gets bitten by that spider, he gets tons of really teeny tiny hairs that allow him to stick to surfaces. Um, all of those hairs that are on the uh, chameleon's toe or the gecko's toes, there will be one hair and then it'll actually split off into hundreds of even tinier hairs. Um, and those tiny hairs actually <clears throat> get into the close contours of the wall. So if there's any bumps from like the paint or anything, those hairs really get into those and um, hang on to it using that uh, sort sort of similar to like static force that we just created. So um, if you were able to get it, that is awesome. If you weren't able to get it to stick, go around your house later on today and find really smooth surfaces. Keep practicing. I'm sure you'll be able to get it to stick to something. Um, after we get off our call today, I'm actually gonna go and see if I can get it stuck to a mirror somewhere else here in the iMac. All right, so our next activity today is our camouflage chameleon. So that is Thursday number two. Inside of the bag, you are going to see a paper that has a chameleon drawn on it. I've already cut mine out, but yours will be a big square with a chameleon. You're also going to see a piece of paper with black and white stripes, a little hard to see on the camera, and then a paper with colored stripes, and my stripes are blue. What you are going to do for this activity is you're gonna pick one of the papers. You can do the black and white stripes, or you can do the colorful stripes um, or just a solid color. And you're actually going to color your gecko to blend in as best as you can. So I've actually already started coloring my gecko. Let's see if I can do it to you a little better. He has some blue on his tail. There's a glue there. Uh, and when I put him on my colored paper, It's not perfect, but his tail starts to blend in there at the end. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna pick one of your sheets of paper. Probably the easier one to do is going to be the black and white one or the solid color on the back of your other stripes. And you're just gonna color your chameleon as best as you can to uh, blend into that background. So I'm just gonna add a little more color to my guy. And while we are coloring, who can tell me why chameleons change colors? Emily, um, you can cut it after you color it. You're gonna wanna color it first. So who can tell me why a chameleon changes their colors? They change colors so they can blend in their environment or surroundings of the, because of the predators. Yeah, so that is what most people think when they see a chameleon changing colors. Uh, but chameleons actually, they change their colors um, usually more in response to their moods. Uh, so I actually had a chameleon when I was growing up, but we do also have a chameleon here at the iMac. Um, and the chameleons, they don't usually blend into their backgrounds necessarily. They've got colors that they'll sort of choose for their mood. So if you ever walked up to a chameleon and its um, skin was starting to turn like really like dark brown or even black, that's usually because the chameleon is scared or even mad. Um, if you maybe picked it up when it didn't want to get picked up um, or it's really unhappy, it'll start to turn black. Um, there's also other colors that they may change in response to the temperature in their environment um just based on if they're too hot or they're too cold and sometimes that does help them blend into their surroundings but it is not why they do it that's just a um, common misconception that we all have about chameleons so go ahead and keep coloring your chameleon until you are done and then you're just going to put it up 
You can cut it out once you're finished coloring it. And you're just going to hold it up to your background and see how well it matches. Uh, mine doesn't match that great. It sort of matches in some places, but not others. But again, my chameleon isn't necessarily trying to change into the background. Uh, it is responding to its environment around him. Your cat bends his ears when he's being picked up. Yep, so that's probably a sign that he's not too happy in that situation. One of my cats likes to run when I pick her up. She doesn't really like it that much. All right. So I do want to see how good you guys were able to get yours. So as soon as you have it cut out um, from the piece of paper, uh, definitely go ahead and turn on your camera and show us how well your chameleon hides in its uh, background. I'll show you what mine looks like. And I didn't color mine all of the way. My only color is that cast. So this is what mine looks like. See, he's got his stripes there. to color it so it could blend in? Uh, you just have to do your best with it. So um, you're going to have to look at the paper that you're trying to get it to match to and try your best to get it to line up on your chameleon. If you wanted to, you can cut it out before you color it. Uh, it's just really hard to hold and color at the same time. I learned that yesterday. All right. Does anyone have theirs finished? I see Pedro, you look like you're getting close. Honor, yours is done. Okay, great. Do you want to show it to everybody? Or you can just tell us how well did yours match its background? Very good job. That turned out awesome. If you held it really far when you first pulled it up, I could just barely see the chameleon on it. That's a good one. Very awesome. All right, so you guys can go ahead and keep cutting out those chameleons. I am just going to explain um, some other activities that you're going to be able to do in your free time. In your bags, you will find uh, two coloring sheets stapled together. Those are labeled Thursday number three. They might not look exactly like the ones that I have here, but these coloring sheets are very, very special. So the coloring sheets that we gave you in this pack actually have an app that goes with them. So if you have um, an iPad or an iPhone or your parents do, you can download the app. And when you put the app or the camera onto the coloring sheet, it will actually sort of bring it to life right there on the iPad. 
So that is actually called augmented reality. Um, and it's where when you hold the picture up to the camera, you can sort of see it there um, as if it's 3D and actually there in front of you. So I've already colored one. I went ahead and colored this really pretty ladybug. And I'll show you the app that you use on your phone or iPad if you have one. So I'm gonna get a little closer for this. So the app that you're gonna wanna use for um, these coloring sheet activities is an app called Quiver. This is what it looks like right here. Oh, it's giving me an error. <laughs> it's called Quiver um, and they do have in here the option for you to print coloring sheets. So if you downloaded this app, you can actually pick coloring sheets from here and print them yourself. So you don't have to just do the ones that we've got here. Uh, you're then gonna color and then you can play. So play is where you, and I wasn't able to get this to work, so we'll see if it does today. You just hold the camera up like this and put your picture behind it. Oh, is it doing it? Maybe. It's a little hard to see on this one. But sometimes you just have to play with it and get it to work. But it's really fun because they have a lot of different things that you can color. So um, in my bag, I had a ladybug to color. I also have a badger. Um, I've seen uh, lots of different like butterflies. Um, I've seen plant and animal cells. There's a lot of different things that you can use uh, through that app, but basically you're gonna color it and then be able to make it come to life right there on the page for you. Uh, I also want to tell you guys about some free activities that you have in your bag for later today. Let me go ahead and pull those out. So the first activity that is extra for you to do at home, um, and it's whenever you want to, you can save it for um, tonight, you can save it for three weeks from now, <laughs> it's whenever you want to get these activities done. Um, the first one looks just like this. It's Thursday number seven. It's a little hard to see with the glare. Thursday number seven, it is called a bubble wrap tortoise. So inside of this bag, you are going to find quite a few things in here. There is a piece of paper with a little tortoise on it. Then you also have green paint and brown paint, a paint roller, and some bubble wrap. So you are definitely going to want to make sure that when you do this later on, you put something down on the table, uh, maybe just another sheet of paper so you don't make a mess everywhere. But all that you're going to do for this activity is you are going to take whichever color paint you would like. Uh, you can use the green, or if you want it to look like Percy the tortoise, um, who we saw in that optional call yesterday, you can use brown. You're going to put the paint onto the roller, Oh, fantastic, your chameleon looks great too. The black and white is definitely easier to do. Uh, so once you have your paint on your roller for this extra activity, you're then going to roll it onto the piece of bubble wrap. And you're gonna wanna make sure you get the bubble wrap nice and covered with the paint. And then you're gonna use the bubble wrap sort of like a stamp and put it on the back of your tortoise. And when you pull it off, you'll actually see a bubble wrap design on your turtle shell. So it'll make its shell look really cool. The other extra activity that you have to do in your free time today, let me go ahead and get it pulled out, is activity number eight. So activity number eight has a really big frog in the bag and a clothespin. So this bag or this activity is also really easy but fun to do. Um, when you go to do activity number eight, all that you are going to do, and it's gonna be so fast and easy, I'll do it right here in front of you. You're just gonna cut out the frog that you've got on this picture, and he's really big. If you're scared of frogs like I am, I'm sorry, he's not real. <laughs> 
So we'll go ahead and cut him out. And then once you have him cut out, you're going to attach him to the clothespin that's in the bag. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut out his entire body, but also you're gonna see on your frog this line that goes straight through him. You're gonna cut him right in half. Follow that line and cut him out. Now you're going to have two frog pieces. Once you are finished cutting them out, you're gonna take either the glue stick that's in your bag or the tape, it's up to you, however you want to attach it. And you're just going to secure the pieces of your frog to the two pieces of the clothespin. So you're gonna to wanna to put his half, top half on the top half of the clothespin and his bottom half on the bottom half of the clothespin. Then when you squeeze your clothespin open and close, the frog is gonna open and close his mouth too. So you're gonna have your very own riveting frog by the end of the day. All right. Does anybody else wanna show us um, their chameleons that maybe finished while we were talking about the other activities? Oh, great. That one turned out really good. Did anyone do like a colored background for theirs or just the black and white? I tried to do the um, color background. Oh, you did? How did that turn out? Were you able to get it good? Very nice. Oh, you had green. Green is a little bit easier than blue and purple, which is what I had. Um, I also wanted to ask, did anybody want to give us an update on their brine shrimp habitat? I know, Leland, you've been showing us yours throughout the week. Um, I didn't follow on this one, Thursday number seven. Uh-huh. I can hear you say it. Yes, that one you can do um, in your free time later today. Leland, do they look really big? It's a little hard to see on the camera. <laughs> These are our these are our brine shrimp habitats that we made on Monday or Tuesday if you didn't have your kit they're on Monday. Still, they're still growing. They're going good. Mine right. are starting to get big. They're starting to swim around in the tank. What um what activity is it? That was Monday activity number one. If if you made it, if you didn't make it, you can make it today later on, and then you'll get to see your shrimp grow too. Okay. How are yours looking? Are they getting bigger, Shamaria? What do you yes? feed the shrimp? Okay. So if you want to feed your shrimp, all you have to do is take out, I'll show you what it looks like. There should be somewhere in your bag, this little bag labeled yeast. Um, it's just because it's a small bag, it could have fallen all the way down to the bottom too. Um, it's yeast and that's what they like to eat. So you can just take a little pinch of yeast, sprinkle it into your brine shrimp habitat, and uh, they'll start to eat it in the next couple of days. It takes them a while to eat the yeast. So if you put them in, if you put the yeast in there, you're gonna wanna not feed them for maybe the rest of the week. Oh, Shamaria, um, what you are probably seeing, are you seeing like little brown dots like floating on the top of the water? Yeah, or are you, are they, are they pink things? Pink on the so on my brine shrimp tanks, at the very top of the water, there are some little brown dots all over the place. Those are just the eggs that we hatch them from. So if you want to, if you've got a whole bunch of um, brown things on the top that either didn't hatch or they're just floating around, you can go ahead and take a spoon Scoop those guys out, um, you're going to have a ton left over. Uh, my brine shrimp that I put in on Monday, um, they are, there's so many of them that are in there. So I would just go ahead and scoop out anything that's floating on the top that doesn't quite look right, uh, and you can focus on the shrimp that are in there. Um, there are so many of them, I promise. Um, any questions about any of the other activities that we've done this week? Yes, Leland, that's what the yeast bag looks like, perfect. Um, did you guys look at your hydroponic self-watering um, water bottle? 
Did it start to suck up water into the bottom? Yours are still coming out of the eggs. Yeah, it might take a little bit of time. I'm gonna leave my eggs in there for the rest of the week and then maybe take them out on Monday. Did anybody see any water go into your self-watering kit or pot? <laughs> I yeah. do not think that that is possible, Lana. I'm sorry. <laughs> Those guys are just gonna have to be taken out, unfortunately. So I checked on my self-watering um, bottle yesterday after letting it sit in the sun for a couple of hours, and I was starting to see that water creep up from the bottom and actually into my plant. Uh, I do just want to remind you, if the water in the bottom half of your cup starts to get too low, just go ahead and pour some more in there. The plant will only pull up what it needs. Um, it might take a while for your seeds to actually start sprouting. So just make sure you keep watering it over the next couple of weeks. And I promise you'll have a sprout um, hopefully by the end of the summer for sure. Some of them just take longer than others. All right, so today we do not have any extra Zoom calls today. So um, we don't have anything where we're going to be logging out and getting back in, um, but you guys do have your regularly scheduled class with your other teachers at 1.30 today. Um, let me see. And yes, go ahead. After um, we, we put, do we put the water mix with the sauce and then we um, put the egg drink, right? Yes, so you mix a little bit of salt into the water, and then once that's fully dissolved, you don't see any salt at the bottom, then you pour your eggs in and mix them up too for about a minute. And it takes a couple of days for all of them to really hatch, so you got to give it some time, but you'll see them in a couple of days. Okay. Yep. Any other questions about the activities that we've done this week so far? I'm not going to be here for the afternoon. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> Those activities, um, if you want to, you can make them in your free time that you've got in your bag. Any other questions? <laughs> you tasted the water just to make sure it's like beach water. That's a good way to check. Um, I wouldn't taste too much of the water, maybe just a little dot, uh, and then that's perfect for your brine shrimp. They really like salty water. Pedro, your chameleon turned out great. I can barely see it on that red background. Awesome. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, I will now turn it over to your other teachers. Do you guys have anything you want to share with them today? Make sure you take the attendance. If you haven't done that this morning, please take your attendance. And um, I'll see you guys at 1.30. Absolutely. As always, we'll see you guys at 1.30. I will post the materials that you need with a picture and our schedule about 12.30, 1 o'clock. All right, guys? Juana, um, please text me your address. You were one of the winners yesterday for the animal bingo. Um, we did animal bingo yesterday, guys. It was pretty cool. Thank you, Imaginarium, for that. Um, I got Tiana and Shamaria's address, but I didn't get yours, Juana. Um, do you need my phone number? I'll put it in the chat box real quick, or can you write it down? And I need you to text me your phone number and text me. Oh, look at that. It's on your hand. Perfect. <laughs> Maybe I, can't, I can't. Oh, that's my number. You wrote your number. Okay. So text me your address because you were the winner yesterday and I'm going to deliver today this afternoon. Okay. Awesome. So tomorrow, guys, um, tomorrow is an optional day for you, but we do have some activities that we'll be doing on this phone call. So I would love to see you all still come. Um, last week, the people who did join, we had a really good time working together. Um, so just to tell you a little bit of what we're going to do tomorrow, um, we are actually going to be doing a fossil sifting together. 
So there is a small bag of fossils in your kit that we are going to be looking through to find things like shark's teeth and animal bones. Um, we also are going to be making a butterfly feeder. So it is summer, butterflies are getting really tired and thirsty in all of this heat. We're gonna make a feeder just for them and you will get to taste what the butterfly food tastes like. Um, I'll give you a heads up, it's very sweet and yummy, so you'll probably like that. Um, we will also be having an animal encounter tomorrow where we will get to meet a tarantula. Um, I'm personally very scared of tarantulas, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we also have a call in the afternoon tomorrow this one is completely optional. Um, it's just going to be with me and we are going to play a game called Cootie together, um, which is really fun. And then we'll also go over some extra activities that you guys can do with your family over the weekend um, or Friday night. You guys all wanna do something fun together. So thank you guys for joining me today. That's the end of our Zoom call together. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Tiana, you have arachnophobia. Yeah, it's pretty Bye. serious sometimes. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>